New details this morning of the killing of the leader of Al Qaeda and the world's most wanted terrorist, Ayman al Zawari. The precise nature of the drone strike, the fact that there was no explosion, and the damage seemed to be limited to this tiny portion of the building where he was, suggests it could be the work of a secretive U.S. weapon, a modified Hellfire missile nicknamed the Flying Ginsu. CNN correspondent Tom Foreman is joining us now. Um, tell us about this modified Hellfire missile. We can tell you what we believe we know. The truth is the Pentagon, the DOD, they don't really even want to talk about this thing. This is what it is believed to be based on a lot of military watchers who study, study it closely. It is a version of a Hellfire missile, meaning it's about five feet long, about 100 pounds, and what makes it unique is this. You can't see the two in the back, but there are six blades that as this flies toward target, they pop out at the last possible moment, creating a kinetic attack force. What that means is no explosion, just a tremendous force moving through a target. So something about as big as a screen is exposed to the attack and nothing else around it. It's a very unusual weapon. And again, they don't really want to talk about it, in part because it is so unusual and such a surprise on the battlefield now. I mean, given given the nickname, I think it answers some of the question, but really explain to folks how this differs from other Hellfire missiles. All right, if you look at a normal Hellfire missile, you see something loaded here on a drone here. Again, we talked about the size, and they're not terribly big. These have been around for decades. They were developed as anti-tank weapons. They're used to fire munitions into uh, buildings, into vehicles, sometimes at, at different sort of communication centers, things like that. They're very common and very widely used. The big difference is this. If you look at the firing of a normal Hellfire missile, it takes off and it's carrying a warhead. It is being guided toward a target, and when it hits, it is going to explode. The blast area when it explodes would be potentially about as big as a football field in terms of where people would be in danger. That's a big impact, and bear in mind, this thing is moving very, very fast. The difference with this one, when you go back to the RX-9, you're talking about one that does not have a blast area at all. You can't call this a bomb. This is a kinetic weapon. It is a kinetic missile. That's its purpose. And that's why they say you use it in a civilian place. You're much less likely to hit anyone other than your target because, again, the damage area is right in one spot. Yeah, it limits that collateral damage that U.S. drone strikes have faced so much criticism because of. When you're specifically, Tom, looking at the aftermath mm -hmm. of this strike that we saw in Kabul, what suggests that this could be the weapon that was used? The same thing that it would suggest to you. Look at the house. There's no sign of a giant blast here. You talk about a blast that could you know, reach out across a football field. There's no sign of that here. There is limited contained damage. You don't see burn marks. You don't see blast fragmentation. You see none of the thing you'd expect from a normal explosion out there. And I want to point out the speed of this thing because this is important. This is moving at close to 1,000 miles an hour, which puts it above the speed of sound at sea level. So even if you were theoretically looking for threats out there, you would not hear it approaching because it's coming too fast. At the speed it's traveling, if you actually spotted this relatively small missile a mile away, you would have four seconds before it was on top of you. That's how fast it's moving. So that's what makes it such a devastating weapon. People don't see it coming. They don't know it's coming. And when it strikes, if it's guided properly and it is being guided, this could actually be guided by somebody in the United States. They don't even have to be over there. When they take it into their target, the goal is to hit specifically what they're after and nothing else. And look at the building. You don't have to be an expert to say, I don't think anything blew up in there. Something very violent, very dramatic happened, but I don't think it was an explosion because it doesn't look like an explosion. That's the signature of this missile, which now appears to have been used about a dozen times in recent years through Yemen and in Iraq, a few other places over there. Yeah, well, it clears up a lot of questions that sure I does. think people have looking at these pictures. Tom, thank you. You're Thanks, Tom.